out here. We have a look at the um, retro style digital signal control panel uh, that I've been planning to make. Retro style. Uh, I mean, it was what digital engineering was when I started a long time, many years ago. And, um, I was just getting into computer electronics and, and then a bit more into computers. And I mean, it's basically just a nostalgic trip into the past. And I do think that even today it's the most clearest way to visual visualize digital logic on states. Um, you know, everything's so integrated and, um, nowadays that it's hard to actually extract the individual component and show them how it works. Anyway, let's have a little look at the um, mock-up. So here's the actual panel. And um, my idea was that one would actually have um, first line of um, LEDs would be the um, eight address lines. Usually old, older systems they had eight address bits, but it, then I was also thinking well, I could actually have more than one box so that I could in increase the number of bits to be yeah, handled. Um, then they would have eight data lines with traced uh, tri-state switches. Uh, these are actually the wrong switches because they only have two states. But basically you could force it to 1, or you could force it to 0, or you could um, have it in the center position, uh, and it would just show what the status of the line is. Um, then it would have um, the same logic, but for um, control signals. So it would, um, you would have four control signals, which you could control, um, if uh, again, a tri-state switch, or then just to show the status of it. And then you'd actually have these... Um, plug-in connectors here so you can actually plug in uh, individual uh, wires and then it has the power supply coming in here and then it would have um, uh, three um, LED displays to either show the value of the absent data lines as um, decimal or hex. Anyway, here's the latest evolution of the um, panel design. Uh, what I did is I moved the um, displays up close to where the signals are, It'll make a little bit more sense. Uh, the trickiest part, if one wants to um, do this thread or stuff, is to get the seven segment displays working the way one should. So uh, the objective would be to um, have a hex or slash decimal display. You can switch between the two um, value sets. Basically what you need is to convert binary to BCD and then the binary BCD to hex decimal um, to the um, uh, seven segment um, displays. Uh, and the problem that I'm having is that the, most of the retro trips, chips doing this kind of encoding decoding is um, they're relatively expensive. So I was thinking, uh, you know, most most um, people that do this kind of uh, retro style redevelopment, they use FPGAs. And that's not an option. But again, it doesn't feel good because it's not true retro. Um, so what I thought I'd do a half compromise. So I'd um, actually include some retro trip chips just to make it um, uh, a little bit closer to the, what I had originally thought. I didn't actually ex expect that the availability and, uh, and the cost of uh, the needed ch uh, TTL chips would be so high. It turns out they are. Availability is a bit difficult and price is also an issue. But I mean, if you would like to provide extra support for this project so I could actually make it fully retro inside, then um, consider buying me a coffee or buy some of my merch, then I'll just um, I'll use that money directly to finance fully a full retro version of this um, digital panel. Um, but now I have to make a little bit of a compromise, so I'm going to use an Arduino Mega in addition to the retro chips that I've actually found with a reasonable price to um, complete the functionality. So let's have a look at that. So anyway, here's the basic schematic. Um, as I said, the, if I build it with this schematic, there will be support by the Arduino Mega will do part of the logic. So the top part is basically just the incoming signals and then um, buffering for those, and then the switch logic. And the bottom half is showing the uh, 
I actually found a, a nice um, set that does BCD to hex 7 segment encoding um, uh, legacy ships, uh, bought them from uh, having them delivered from China. So those I'll say. I would have liked to have had the um, binary to BCD um, encoders, but uh, ah, no, again, availability and expense. And I was actually, as I said, I was thinking of building a series of four boxes and uh, basically either the availability became a problem or ah, mainly the cost of <laughs> it. Uh, you can buy our... Ah, like, I mean, it's not surprising. You get FPGA or, or you know, um, microcontroller logic much cheaper than um, what you can get the old-style old TTL chips. Which is a bit of a pity because it would have been cool to make this fully retro. Anyway, so those geeks out there that are interested in this, I mean, I've, uh, I've actually considered using um, PROM or EEPROM based um, solutions. Um, uh, you could use X like um, 16F628 uh, and then build some programs in those. Um, I, I went for actually um, pulling the, the dedicated CMOS logic. You know, you, you have chips like MCU 144, and I5, and uh, DM uh, 9368. So those do the, the heavy lifting. Or you can even buy special hex uh, display um, seven segment LEDs. <laughs> what was it called? TIL 311s. But they're horribly expensive. <laughs> that's the issue with making it fully retro. So I hope you found this informative. Um, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button. Uh, merch is available. Um, or you can just buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, links are in the comments. And um, I'll see you in the next one.